Let's talk about data visualization. Uh, it's easy to look at data visualization and go, ah, oh, well, it's just creating pretty pictures, and what do I need to know about that for machine learning? But it is actually a fundamental aspect of uh, doing machine learning is to first look at the data, see what's going on, uh, are there outliers, are there patterns that need to be uh, identified, and uh, some of the things that are interesting about um, data visualization are that AWS itself has a pretty powerful built-in data visualization service, and it's very possible you may be asked questions about it. So let's go ahead and take a look at a diagram of a uh, version of QuickSight that I was using just recently where I pumped in some data into it, and it was able to actually give me some really interesting statistics about some real estate data. So we can see that um, I was able to summarize all the different ranking and the quantity of uh, housing prices uh, by different regions. And you can see that California here is uh, an outlier that uh, all of the real estate that was viewed in 2017 is close to a billion dollars. You can see and then we've got the rest of uh, you know, the United States. So there's something unusual happening in, and there's a lot of real estate value uh, accumulated in California. So again, from a data visualization standpoint, immediately I can see something where uh, potentially California is, is not gonna behave the same as these other parts of the model. So do I need to create a separate model just for California or do I need to um, just know about that and then uh, do some kind of different data visualization? So it's the first process that you're gonna use and Amazon has a great initial data visualization service called QuickSight. Even further, what's really fascinating about QuickSight is that it has some new features that are available from uh, reInvent 2019 and there's an emerging trend in these data visualization tools to allow a business intelligence person to do machine learning predictions right inside of the tool. So QuickSight has this now as well. So uh, again, it's a machine learning exam. Uh, it's fair play to think that they may ask you a question of not only do, do you know how to do data visualization with QuickSight, but do you understand how someone would do machine learning within the context of this automated uh, data visualization tool? So let's go ahead and take a look at QuickSight in action and actually play around with this data ourselves. All right, now let's dig into QuickSight and see uh, what we can actually accomplish. Uh, so first we open it up, we look at um, this uh, initial frame here. To create your own new analysis, we would just go through here, do a new analysis, and we would just wanna put in our new data sets. So in QuickSight, you also can go through here and actually um, upload your own data sets. Uh, so here's an example, I could upload a, a CSV file, I could talk to Salesforce, I could talk to S3, uh, Athena, RDS. There's a lot of different options here for data sets where you would create it from scratch. Because I've already uploaded some data, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, NBA data that I've uploaded. You can see here that it shows me how many rows were uh, imported, uh, the size of it, uh, and now I can actually go through and I can create an analysis. Uh, once I've gone through and created an analysis, um, I can actually just go ahead and pick different uh, options. So in this case, in this data set, it summed all the three-pointers uh, that were available in the data set. Now it's gonna go ahead and sum the three-pointers and the two-pointers, and you can see uh, here's all the different values. So uh, from a um, exploration of the data, uh, QuickSight is a really powerful uh, feature set that allows you to just immediately get different um, uh, questions answered. And so uh, a business intelligence uh, person could immediately just start going through and looking at, okay, let's look at the sum of the two pointers and let's let the sum of the three pointers and let's go ahead and look at a visualization of how that looks like. Okay, great, now I'm gonna create a prediction model that uh, determines how, how likely this player will create a three pointer, for example. So Amazon has some really powerful capabilities that are growing stronger with the addition of machine learning. And this is a great service to play around with to make sure you understand these capabilities on the AWS platform. As you can see, it's trivial to get started. You just click some buttons, upload a CSV file, uh, and then again, click some buttons to get a data visualization. So now that we looked at uh, some of the stuff you can do on the native uh, AWS platform with automated tools, let's also see how we can do it ourselves and, and also make sure that we understand these things because they could come up on the exam. So the EDA cycle 
uh, really is used to detect outliers, see data distributions, and uh, let's go ahead and see how we could do that using an interactive library called Plotly. So I'm gonna pull in some uh, real estate data here and pull it into a pandas data frame. There we go, I've got this data frame. Now I'm gonna go through and uh, change around a little bit and make sure that I have uh, a zip code and um, do some pre-processing. And again, these are really common things that are gonna come up uh, in a real world data science project before you do machine learning. And also you could be asked uh, similar questions on the exam. So this would be a great data set to play around with yourself. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna look at the median values for home prices and I'm gonna assign those into this data frame. All right, I'm able to go ahead and do that. And now I'm gonna use Plotly, this interactive data visualization library to plot those results. There we go. Um, I've already installed it, I won't run that. Now I'm gonna go through and do this plot. And I'm gonna title this plot, Bay Area Median Single Family Home Prices 96 to 2017. And if we look through here now, uh, what's great about this interactive plot is that you can see I'm able to actually scroll through and get results on each of these areas of the country, these four different areas, and also look at the different years. So this really gives you uh, a little bit of an insight into how interactive data visualization uh, adds quite a bit of uh, perspective to the data. So for example, we know that uh, right around 2000, uh, eight to 2010, there was a, a home crisis, and the rest of the United States has really kind of stayed the same, but since then, there's been an exponential surge in pricing in Palo Alto. So Palo Alto prices have essentially doubled since uh, 2010. So if you are rich, you're a, a lot richer, uh, but we also know that there's some turbulence in the real estate market, and you just by looking at this exponential growth curve, we can see that maybe it's not a great time to be purchasing a house, there's a little bit of instability. And again, these are perspectives that you only can see if you have an interactive data visualization.